What's up you guys, Steven here for Off The Shelf Movie Night to talk to you about physical media, about Blu-rays and 4Ks and DVDs. However you like to buy and own your movies and TV shows and own them on a physical disc and discuss your collection and movies in general. You're in the right spot. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so and then hit that notification bell and stay in the loop so you'll know what's happening. My post schedule is weird. I'll post in blobs of posts when I have free time between my own production shoots and that kind of thing. So you can't really count on a Tuesday post or a Sunday post or whatever. It's really random for me. So the best thing you can do is hit the notification bell. If you like the video, please hit the like. Take a second and hit that thumb up. It really helps get the word out about the, the channel and the episode and that kind of thing. So with all that said, I'm not actually talking about a piece of physical media today. As I said in my previous review of Uncharted, there are a few movies out that are in zeitgeist that I want to share my opinion on, especially since I'm on the opposite side of the spectrum when it comes to what I'm seeing in fandom. Not what I'm seeing in general criticism, because Uncharted and this movie both are, are not doing the best. But uh, I feel like it, it's important to take an honest look at things, to step outside of our fandom and actually really look at a film for its quality so that we inspire better quality from these studios. When we say, oh, this is great, this is fine, this is good, when it's not good, just being happy to have something is not enough because then you get more garbage. What I'm talking about is the Netflix original Texas Chainsaw Massacre film that's out. And spoiler alert, I fucking hated it. Um, there are some positive aspects of the movie, but generally I didn't like it. Let's get into it. So, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise has been kind of a hot mess from the beginning. You had the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which is stunning, effective, and one of the best horror movies ever made. It's disturbing in its atmosphere and in its violence and also its lack thereof. Its uh, insinuated violence is pretty impactful. It's, it's like Halloween in that way. There's a lot more... Um, violence of the imagination than there is actual physical on-screen violence. So it, the bar is really high trying to do anything related to that movie. Now, Toby Hooper did eventually, many years later, do a sequel to Texas Chainsaw Massacre, but he agreed to do so if he could change the tone, and he certainly changed the tone with TCM Part 2. I really like Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. But it is a very, very different kind of movie. It is more camp. It's silly. It, it has the commentary, the social commentary that he wanted it to have. But it, it, it's just a bizarre movie. And I love it for that. I don't think Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I think by doing the movie he did there, you know, dual chainsaw wielding Dennis Hopper is phenomenal. I love it so much. But by doing that movie, he kind of destroyed any canon or any franchise uh, existence thereof because it's it's not it's kind of like Halloween three in a way. Halloween three is really what Carpenter meant for the Halloween franchise, where every movie's different. I feel like Texas Chainsaw Massacre becomes that now too, even though it's a chainsaw wielding bad guy. Leatherface is a completely different entity across all of the movies. So there were some sequels that were really bad. There were remakes that were generally bad with some shining moments. And then we have this movie that decides to forget everything and be a sequel to the original. So if you're going to do that, you set the bar high for your film because you're returning tonally to that original movie, to the documentary feel of it, to the to the dark, surreal, uh, boiling hot look of it. You're returning to everything that made that movie effective. You have put, by doing this, you have set the bar very high. Okay? So, the movie, this movie has had a lot of difficulty getting made. We had Fetty Alvarez on it. I think if Fetty Alvarez had done more than just write the script, or he didn't write the script, he wrote the story, he had a story concept. If he had stuck with it, refined a script and directed it, we would probably have a better movie because I trust him a little bit more as a director. Instead, what we got is the cinematographer from Bloodfest directing this movie. 
So this movie picks up 50 years after the first one. Right there we have an issue, because this would make Leatherface himself in his 70s. Potentially he's uh, up, to, up to 80 years old. The Leatherface in this movie looks like maybe he's 40, maybe? So the timeline doesn't work all of a sudden. We have him living in a space that has nothing to do with the first film and there's no explanation to it, right? That's a problem. Also, the cast of characters we have set up. We don't like anybody. No one is likable in this movie. But within the first few minutes, we get this weird story about a group of young people coming to buy an entire town or to help sell it or to resell it. It's weird and makes no sense. It feels like the, the story was written around this ghost town. And here's what's fascinating. They set this town up as a character and then they never use it. The majority of the movie is set in a couple of locations, a house and on a bus. Uh, it, it, what's the even point of this weird, convoluted story? So we get the characters and no one's likable. I also, I like social commentary and political commentary in my horror films. I like it. Dawn of the Dead is the one I reference all the time, and it's, it's commentary on capitalism. But I like it when it's built into the story and it exists as part of the story, not when the story stops to talk to you about social commentary. Not, it, this movie literally stops at a couple of points to say, hey, did you know, did you know guns are bad? You know, I, I can dis, I can agree, and I do honestly. Whatever you want to say, I agree with what this, the commentary is saying in the film. I just feel like it's badly implemented and wedged in. Okay, so we have an 80-year-old Leatherface who's still very capable of killing, like the way he used to, and and I don't understand how that is, right? So we get into the movie itself. We bring back our main character from the first film looking for revenge she's been afraid her whole apparently been afraid her whole life since she escaped that leatherface was still going to kill her but at the same time she stayed in texas so okay so we also have her not only afraid that she is going to get killed by leatherface but also kind of wanting revenge and trying to find him when it turns out she's five ten minutes down the road from him the entire 40 50 years what the fuck? What the fuck? So we bring her in for her redemption. She doesn't get it. Her whole story arc is wasted. It means nothing. It does nothing except set up more weird moments where she decides to use two people in the film as bait. And somehow, coming out of nowhere, rolling up into this movie out of nowhere, her story's been happening outside of the main story. She knows, in fact, states... Uh, that he wants, he's focused in on these two characters, and so she needs to make them stay where they are so that she can use them as bait. It, may, it makes no sense how she knows this. So, Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a massacre. And in that massacre scene, I, I, there's a, it's set up very in a very cringe moment, okay? This is in the trailer. This is not spoiling. When one of the characters holds up his cell phone and starts an Instagram live and says, we're going to get you canceled. Okay, fuck you. That's stupid. I'm cussing a lot during this because this movie made me mad. It's stupid, and it gets even more cringy when you see the entire scene. So it leads to a massacre, which is cool. I mean, this is an actual massacre, right? Except the entire thing is done with CG, and there's at least one very crucial moment, one very you know, high intensity kill where he's swinging the chainsaw like a lightsaber and the blade, which by the way, a chainsaw has a, you know, has a chain on it. The blade disappears because it's CG and they don't do anything about it in post. It's just like mostly gone. Stupid, very bad filmmaking. This movie, it just like, you don't like anybody and that's okay. Kind of. Um, the the plot is nonsensical. It it like the timeline never makes any sense. The acting is pretty bad, and there's another thing. It's shot very glossy, which you know 
the original film had that film grain, that sort of 16 millimeter grungy documentary look to it, which made it even more gross. Well, this one shot very, very crisp digital, which, you know, I mean, that's the nature of the beast, but then there's a layer of faux digi grain laid across the top of it, which just looks like hot garbage and is inconsistent from scene to scene. You guys, this movie is awful. It's awful. Now, I did mention at the top of this rant that there were some positives, and the positives are it's freaking brutal. The first 20 minutes of the movie, even though I couldn't work out the timeline in my head in a way that made sense looking at Leatherface, I did kind of enjoy the brutality and appreciate the brutality of it. This is being executed on screen. Um, even though there's CG, the kill, the first kill, is pretty good. I mean, it's pretty effective. But then the real story, story part of it kicks in, and the movie just becomes hot garbage. So the first 20 minutes, there's some good kills and some appreciated brutality. Also, this chainsaw hasn't been cranked in 50 years, but boy, it cranks easy. I'm just saying. Uh, the other part is it, it moves along at a very fast clip. You're, you're not even investing an hour and a half in the, mil, in the film, so it gets in and out really quick. It's, you guys, I don't know what else to say. I think I, as I'm recording this, it's at 30% on Rotten Tomatoes, and I think that's generous. I think on my letterbox, I think I'm giving it about a half a star. If you want to see more detail and less ranty commentary, go to my letterbox and read it. Uh, let me know what you thought of the film in the comments. I know a lot of people in fandom, I'm seeing a lot of other posters that are saying, this is great, it's fun, it's entertaining. And I'm like, the acting's bad, the plot makes no sense, and and it's not that this has to be some Academy Award winning plot, but a simple story will suffice. Uh, the CGI is kind of bad. Why, why is, what's enjoyable? What's enjoyable? I, I mean, there was a couple of points, and I, I could get more spoilery about what I didn't like about the movie, but I, I don't want to spoil in case you choose to watch it. But I'm just, I look at the screen and I yell, fuck you, movie, more than once, because it makes so many dumb story decisions that they didn't have to do. Anyway, go to my letterbox. There's more stuff there. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the movie, if you liked it. I'm happy to have this discussion with you. Just be nice. I said that in the Uncharted review because I've had two movies in a row that I didn't like. So um, be nice. Let's talk about it. Um, until next we meet, pull something cool off the shelf, share it with your friends and family, and remind them why physical media is the best way to watch films and TV at home. I will see you guys on the next one.